Welcome to Winning Wall Street's Money. Help support my channel. We need to get to 1,000 subscribers pretty much as soon as possible. So then I go live streaming because YouTube policy that won't let me go live until I have 1,000 subscribers. Thank you to all the folks out there that have subscribed to my YouTube channel. If you have not yet, please take this moment now with helping me. Click subscribe. Next, click the bell. And next, click all. This helps you receive a notification when I post my next videos. Plus, click the thumbs up button and every time you watch my videos. If you got value from this video, if this was helpful, then please consider sharing a small monetary donation to my channel by going below and clicking on either my Patreon or PayPal links. If you join my Patreon page, then you'll get early access to these videos 24 hours before they're posted on the YouTube and lots more. If you prefer just leaving a small tip, click on PayPal. Either way, then you get that warm sense of satisfaction years down the line knowing that you helped me become a successful YouTuber. Friday, June 10th, 4.46 p.m. New York time. U.S. stock markets are closed. Futures markets open for about another 13 minutes. Look here on the left. This is a watch list of the equity indexes. No name for equity indexes or stock indexes. They all closed red. S&P 500, NASDAQ 100, Dow Jones Industrial Average, Russell 2000, Dow Transports, Dow Utilities. Yep, all red. The 11 sectors in the S&P 500, all red. And let's look here at the Dow Jones index. We got one green, yep, contrarian, hmm. And it's symbol, Whiskey Mike Tango, that's Walmart, okay. It's the strong kid on the block. So takeaway here, lesson learned, I'll explain to you. Often when you have hard sell-offs in the market overall, and you have a single stock that's positive green, that might be just news for the day that it released that was positive. What you wanna look for is when these indexes all turn green or up strength, this may have the best move up because it closed green on a down day. So you expect it's gonna perform even better on an up day. That's some wisdom, that's an insight. You could back test that and see how well it works on good companies. Good companies, not on something based on 20 years ago, based on two years ago. Yeah. Some people want to say, make sure it has a low PE. Well, I prefer to look at the charts. But let's go ahead and close these up. And start off looking at the equity indexes. SP5, SPX, SP500. Weekly's done, so uh, weekly time frame. So note, we I had drawn a Fibonacci retracement here, and it changed. It made a lower high, lower low for the week. Yep. So we're going to take take away that Fibonacci retracement because it's no longer valid. <clears throat> Excuse me. What happened was this big red candle, huge tail wick. I had drawn that horizontal zone to the right of it for a retest. And it went up, started, filled, so it's no longer a valid. That big green candle, I drew the midpoint, and it broke through that and closed below that. That is valid, yeah. Valid meaning that the downside. This has been a demand zone of buyers before, where these wicks were, and it paused there. Looking here at the NASDAQ 100, very similar. And the Dow Jones Industrial Average, same thing. This Fibonacci is no longer valid. So it went up between the 0.382 and 50. Yep, it's just still extremely bearish. Dow Transports, same thing. But here, it's a tighter consolidation, very clear consolidation staircase pattern, lower low. And the Dow Utilities, interesting, yep. Remember this several weeks ago, budget tail, small trading ranges, impulse move up, 
inside candle means indecision and it rolled over. Not surprised because here too, we had a move up inside candle roll over. So some people might call this yellow handle, yellow candle here, a hammer or a hangman. Nah, I like to see it at the trend high, trend low to identify that. But what I do identify is here is the pin bar. It was a pin bar, yep. but it wasn't, it was inside. So the location was not right. And the Russell 2000 interest made a higher high <laughs> filled. Yeah. Cause again, consolidation, breakdown, consolidation, staircase pattern, lower, low. Let's do this just for now. And then if I need to update it, I could do that. Don't need no moving average to tell me what I see more clearer. Consolidation, breakdown, consolidation, breakdown, consolidation, breakdown. That's what's happening. Let's go on to the sectors now. Those 11 sectors that are inside the S&P 500. We know they're red. They all closed red for the day. But let's identify where the trend is. First, XLK, X-ray Lima Kilo, red for the week. Never even made a high, just a lower, lower, lower high. Deep, deep retracement down here. XLV, even worse. It took out that, that was a low, swing low, and it took it out. Well, it might have closed back inside of it, still made a lower, lower high, lower low from here. Never the candle, and took out that swing low. XLF, yep, the financials. Just did a video on them a few days ago. I showed that a lot of them were bad performing. So it's not a surprise we have this huge trading range. And notice here too, see this huge red candle all the way back here beginning of the year, then went down the following week, roll over. So we may see that come next week. We may see buyers step in next week, do another retracement. XLY, look at that, still in consolidation. They even take off, didn't even take out that prior high. XLC, X-ray Lima Charlie. Yep, that's not a surprise. Yep, hard sell off. That's real clear. Yep. XLI. Yep, went in there. That retracement and already huge move down. Everything. XLP. Which is interesting here. See these two inside candles. This week we broke below this one. And then we also took out below here. Bunch of buyers stepped in. See that wick, long wick. So here too, a bunch of buyers. So we have higher lows. Buyers are coming in for XLP. What is XLP? It's the consumer staples sector. Mm -hmm. You get be outright buying a stock ETF, or you can look for the stocks inside of that stock ETF. Let's get rid of this. This is the logo of Alec. XLE. New high for the year, higher high, higher low, outstanding. So here, like a bearish pin bar pretty much. And one would expect we're going to go lower, but at some point have a retest, some point retest in this high, or at least attempt, attempt to retest it. Let's do a fib, run a Fibonacci on here, because it is a trend and identify some places it may come down to. And what that means, it comes down to those levels too. Significant messages identifies if it does a retest at points 382 and goes, does not go lower that, but if it goes up, if it does a deeper retracement point 68, that gives me another message what that means. Very two important key levels, point 382, point 0.618. XLU, Oof, deep retracement, not good. XLRE, real estate, yep. Made a new low for the year. What was acceleration here broke below. And look at that, prior week was inside candle, the yellow, which we had several of them, and they broke below them, new low. So one would think now if the real estate is breaking down, real estate is divided in categories, commercial real estate, residential real estate. So you could look at those industries and see, did they all close red for the week? 
What percentage one closed down for the other one? Did any of them close green? Who's surviving? You also uh, start looking at commercial residential real estate, see which one's sitting longer on the open market, which ones are reducing prices. XLB, wow, huge sell-off, right into this demand zone where prior buyers were, and that's where it stopped. It stopped, just closed slightly in there, interesting. Those are the 11 sectors. Now let's look at the high profile stocks, the FANG Plus, that so many big institutions trade, manage for other people. Apple, Alpha Alpha Papa Lima also made a lower high, lower low, red for the week. Pause right here at the demand zone. It's also in a consolidation phase, excuse me. So let's do that. Get very near the lows of the year. Microsoft, oof, huge sell-off. Yep, another staircase pattern, lower low. And by seeing this, to me, seeing these staircase pattern, lower lows, again, I could identify that, yes, the trend is bearish, and we still have potential going lower. Mm -hmm. Want to know? How far back? Well, obviously you go to the higher time frame. So I could do this. Let's put this to default. Go to monthly setting. Now each candle is a month. I can see what's currently going on for the month. Inside candle, it didn't take out the higher low last month. That prior month is a huge wick. Let me add my drawings monthly. Yep. Interesting. Yep. Potential demand zone. Okay, let's go into the next. Amazon, oof, huge trading range here and close deep red all the way down in here. Don't know why my drawings did a queue up, oof. That's not cool, that's not cool. What happened to my drawings? No, don't know. Darn night shift, they might've been touching my uh, chart settings. There was no night shift, it's all me. That's suspicious, not cool. Oof, not good. Facebook, oh, Amazon must have sabotaged. Okay, Facebook weekly candles. Look at small trading ranges. Uh, we haven't even got back in a retracement here. And small little bodies, see these little bodies, big wicks, makes me think potential distribution, like it's gonna go roll over lower, 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 lower. Not good. Let's put this on the monthly. Very suspicious here. Looks like it's in deep further recline. Okay. Yeah. Yep, yep. It's bearish, extremely. Google. Look at that big red candle with a big wick on top. Potential. Yeah, higher probability that's going to retrace further down here, going lower. And Tesla. Again, coming back to their near lows of the year. Not good. November Victor Delta Alpha, huge sell-off. Massive rejections up there too, wow. Let's go right here, label it. So, consolidation phase, it looks like it wants to still go lower, lower. Netflix, yeah, <laughs> we'd be surprised. Another huge dump down here. Not looking good. And obviously Disney closed red because it was in the Dow index I just showed you. So takeaway, look at these FANG stocks. I mean, FANG plus stocks, not good. Let's see if there's any positive. There we go. Bravo Alpha, Bravo Alpha, Alibaba, positive. Not only did it close green, made a higher, high, higher low and close above the acceleration. And I've been sharing this to you for so many times what's happening here. Yeah. So good job out if you've, you've been doing the advanced strategies with bull puts breads below here. You're making money. Good job out of you. You don't have to buy the stock to make money. There's good option strategies. So let's label this huge wick. Now this is interesting here, here and here. And let's take it on a deeper level of investigation. Include volume. <clears throat> okay, fact. That was the top of the trading range. That was the bottom of the trading range. It closed green, but it closed midpoint 
of its candle. That's bearish. Got it. Yeah, you'd rather have it close higher up above the midpoint. Looking here, we had huge volume, which is good compared to the prior week because at a bigger trading range, so more volume pushed it up. That's part's positive. Coming into this part, well, we had less volume here. That's good. So we had more volume to the upside, more buyers. But looking here, this green candle, let me see volume over here. <clears throat> that green candle, 326 million shares versus 293. So you had more volume going down on the, sorry, you had more volume up here when it closed green than here. So that's suspicious. Again, more volume here, less volume here. But similar candles. See that green high tail, high tail. So we have to see what happens come the next week. Are we going to break above or below? And how does it trade with volume to identify? Is it more selling or buying? We don't know, but it is interesting again, that this is a key level 125. I like to see it break, break above. Many thanks for watching.